Okay, so hello everyone. Um, welcome to our Horizon Weekly Insider number 38. Today is April the 30th and happy Thursday to you all. Please remember that this call is being recorded and it's going to be available in our Horizon podcast as well as in our YouTube channel. Uh, also, please remember to uh, start asking your questions so we can have our, Q our good Q&A session at the end through the mentee.com app. Uh, let's just start with the updates now from the engineering department. And now let's welcome Luca. Thank you, Angie. So today, last day of April, uh, it has been a very intense and productive month for the engineering department. And uh, I'm sure if you have followed us in the past weeks, you know already about the three libraries we released and also the new team member, Luigi, who joined us uh, last week. Speaking about this particular week, we did uh, several code review sessions on some of the components of the SiteChain SDK beta, for example. And um, for the description of these, uh, I'd like to hand it over to Alberto and later I will uh, follow with uh, some other updates. So please, Alberto, if you want to proceed now. Oh, sure. Thanks, Luca. Okay. Uh, starting from the SDK. Uh, okay, a first pull request, I mean, I would say that the, the, maybe the main pull request regarding Ouroboros VRF has been approved. I mean, this included the uh, base implementation uh, for uh, being able to use the, uh, the VRF uh, function to, to demonstrate to be eligible as a forger in a, in a, in a specific slot. So, uh, all the changes that were related to this uh, were implemented in uh, in this pull request. I mean, and uh, this doesn't include the interface with the native implementation that is part of of another pull request. But I mean, the um, the part of the code that um, is managing this VRF uh, stuff. Uh, always uh, related to the uh, VRF. Uh, Another pull request uh, um, regarding nonce calculation uh, was reviewed, uh, and in particular, these these pull requests uh, uh, introduced the possibility to uh, calculate the nonce accordingly uh, to the Robros paper, and this means going in the previous epoch and uh, taking uh, let me say one third of the blocks or in the in the middle of it and and taking the outputs and uh, hash them together and use it as a nonce for um for to be used in this epoch and i mean this this uh, was part of another pull request um uh, i ch i requested some changes for uh performances improvements and so these are uh, i think that they're almost ready uh, and so Probably uh, on Monday, uh, these are going to be reviewed, and uh, if everything okay, they are going to be approved and merged. And uh, okay, um, the other um, the other part um, always. I mean, this is the uh, week of uh, VRF. So uh, the, let's say uh, in uh, in. In the in the robbers uh, prowse, we have the possibility to uh, delegate some forger with our stake. What does this mean? Uh, I could uh, I can use my stake and lock it and delegating a forger, an actor that will have the node and whatever, whatever uh, to use. Let me say uh, to consider this stake. Uh, in the eligibility process verification. So, uh, and, and this is very uh, useful because, you know, the more, more uh, part of the stake is participating in, in, the, in, the, in, the, uh, in the consensus, the better it is, no? Uh, so, um, it could happen that uh, many actors, many, uh, yeah, many actors are going to uh, maybe delegate one single uh, Forger, and this forger at each slot, for each slot, should understand if he is eligible or not. And this means verifying, calculating uh, the VRF output, the 
the proof and the output. Specifically, to, to understand the legibility, he needs to calculate the output. And then, uh, let me say, make some function that uh, will make it proportional to the stake of the delegated uh, amount. And, uh, and then uh, this forger will see if for that particular delegation was eligible or not. So, uh, but as you can imagine, this should be a very fast process and quick processes because if you have been uh, selected for uh, many, uh, if you have been um, delegated by many stakers, um, you have to test them until you find some 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 uh, eligible one. No, so this should be fast, should be quick, and so um, um, we have um, um, decided to to make some modification in the in the proof calculation in the VRF proof calculation to be able to return also the output directly. And uh, and this is, uh, let me say, uh, one of the um, uh, improvements that has, has been made in the library and that are uh, going to be uh, reviewed uh, the next week. Okay. Um, regarding uh, the uh, backward transfer logic uh, and uh, the certificate submission process, uh, another pull request uh, was opened and we started reviewing it uh, um, today and so i think that this process will continue uh, also the next week i mean this is a quite big uh to request so it will take a little bit of time for 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 reviewing it all but i mean we are proceeding with this okay this was the uh part related to the sdk and uh we can switch for uh, to, to the ginger lib okay um now is ready to review um, a branch uh, that introduced the possibility for the proof verifier gadget to use NR coded and pre computed verification key. Uh, what does this mean? Okay, let's say you want to verify a proof in a circuit. And this is, a, a, let me say, a key point for performing recursion in, in proof. So having proofs that proves that you have verified the proof. Uh, but um, to verify a proof, you should verify it using a specific verification key. So, I mean, the ver verification key could be part of the inputs, let me say, or if it is already known at the time of, of the circuit creation, you can even hard code this into the circuit. So you will not need to pass it uh, as a public input or, uh, yeah, as a public input. So, or in, as a witness. So, uh, and and these lead to um, many advantages because by our coding, you can even um, start pre-computing some values that are related to the verification key, and you will not need to enforce the relation between the verification key and these values. So uh, in this way, we will be able, if we know the verification key at the time of the generation of the circuit, we will be able to hard code these pre-computed values directly in the circuit. And we will not need to, to uh, recalculate them every time we need to generate the proof that verifies a, a, a proof. And uh, we, we will not have the constraints that are necessary to enforce this calculation. So this is a, 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 a necessary improvement when we have to verify a proof inside the circuit. Uh, okay, uh, let's switch for Poseidon hash Merkel tree implementation. Um, the first review uh, has been uh, made. Some changes were requested and uh, they are almost ready for review too. I mean, these, these new changes. And uh, moreover, um, we are also um, currently design, uh, designing um, the changes that are needed to introduce the possibility uh, for quickly and efficiently update the Merkle tree. So let's say we have an existing Merkle tree. We want to perform some transition. We want to be able to, uh, let me say, update these tree in an efficient way. And so this is something that we are also uh, working on and we need to, um, to uh, 
okay, more in general, let me say, uh, uh, both for Zendo Sidechain, CryptoLib, and GingerLib, uh, some uh, additional uh, um, changes has been made. But I mean, this is part of the uh, usual uh, let's say, process of uh, improving it, improving them, and, and so on. Okay, regarding the main chain um, changes, um, I think that next next week will be the uh, main uh, week for 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 uh, for review. Uh, many of the of the uh, most of the code that has been uh, developed during this uh, this last weeks, and I mean, seems to be everything. Probably I forgot something, but it's okay. Thanks, Luca. <laughs> Thank you, Alberto. Great updates. And uh, I'll now continue with a few other points. For what regards the new explorer for mainchain and uh, also sidechains, we are moving uh, uh, on. So um, the code to support sidechain inside a new branch uh, of the library Bitcore Libzen um, was ported, and uh, we are configuring the new explorer to use it. This will allow, will basically allow to avoid having a duplicate code inside the, the new explorer and also reuse uh, the existing library also in the new version. Then we are um, uh, in parallel proceeding with the intermediate code review of, uh, of this new explorer. And in particular, we completed the part concerning uh, the bootstrap, peer connection and database synchronization. And what is currently under review is the last part concerning the API endpoint routes. For what regards the, the Sphere by Horizon version that uh, integrates sidechain comments, uh, we finished to implement the first design changes requested by the UX team last week. We are currently working on uh, other uh, changes requested this week, and uh, we plan to finish them uh, in the first part of the next week. On uh, the other hand, for what regards the version of Sphere by Horizon in production, so not the one uh, currently integrating uh, the sidechain comments, we are working uh, to fix a few open issues, two in particular, that, were, that we decided to prioritize. And for this reason, uh, we expect to have a new version of Sphere by Horizon addressing those issues, plus having uh, also part of the new design um, to be released uh, soon. Uh, for sure, we will communicate the date uh, uh, once we decide that. Uh, about the main chain changes to support side chains, uh, Alberto already mentioned that uh, things are in progress or also there. Some of the developments uh, are um, uh, being ready for uh, review, while others are still uh, ongoing. And uh, speaking uh, about the main chain uh, since the current zend will stop working at the beginning of june for our normal upcoming uh, deprecation cycle we will release uh, uh, as usual a new zend version with a uh, focus on general maintenance and um, so we are uh, going to list all the contents uh, and the info on how and when to upgrade release uh, release it uh, as a blog post for our users, send the uh, email, emails to all our partners and exchange uh, for information in a joint effort with the marketing uh, team. So more info will uh, follow in the next weeks. Uh, and of course, we will continue to keep uh, everybody posted. That's it for now. We'll be available at the end for engineering related questions. So back to uh, UNG for now. Awesome. Thank you, Luca and Alberto for the great updates. Let's continue with Ruben for the help desk updates. Hey guys, can you hear me? Sure. Yes, we do. Okay, perfect. So I'm re-uploading the images from the report. So Ruben here reporting from Mexico, the help desk update for this week. So let's get into it. As we can see in the pie chart, the fossil tickets take up to almost 74%. And we can review also the 27 remaining percent of the tickets in uh, in the other bar plot. And we can see also that the second most common issue was uh, from Spear. So let's discuss this. So on the faucet side, we had tickets in which people were using a VPN and got banned from accessing the faucet since a VPN is not allowed. Uh, and the solution for this was pretty straightforward. So we basically suggested our users to stop using the VPN and the problem got solved. 
On the Sphere side, we got tickets uh, on new community members. That's actually pretty good on members asking how to use the instructions. But, sorry, how to use the wallet. And we also had cases in which people were forgetting their credentials. So it's important to, I want to uh, remember the community that Sphere does not store any login credentials or any information in the cloud. So basically all the information in Sphere is stored locally in your computer. It's, this means that the support team or any team member are not able in any way to reset your passwords. And I don't want to sound like a broken record here, but please remember guys to always have your seat taken down and stored in a secure place. So on the help desk data side, we got 100 tickets this week resolved and 173 tickets created this week. On the other, on the customer satisfaction side, we got a grade of 4.5 out of 5, rated by 26 of 4 users. And that's it from the help desk report. Back to you, Angie. Thank you, Ruben. Let's continue now with Gustavo for some more UX updates. Hey, everyone. Happy Thursday. Thanks for the update, Ruben. So really short update on my side. Can't give too many details at this moment, but we are working on the transition of the faucet to a community hub, and uh, we keep working on development on HD. And it's all. Thank you, Gustavo. Let's continue with Rowan for some BD updates. Thank you, Angie. Hello, everyone. Uh, okay, where to start? So first up, we have payroll going out on Tuesday. So I just need to remind everybody on the team, if you're submitting timesheets, please do that by close of business today. And that will give managers enough time to review and give us enough time to get everything processed quickly. Uh, Madar just confirmed this morning, or at least my morning, uh, that he's organizing an interview with me. So looking forward to that. That'll give me a chance to help get some of the word out about where we are uh, and talk a little bit about the cool stuff that Beta brings to the table. Um, I'm also kicking off a little bit of a documentation project internally that I'll be pulling in help from engineering and also from marketing just to try and put together a couple of different one-pagers. I discussed this in the uh, earlier in the week with a few different people. Uh, but the idea here is a one-pager on why uh, developers and businesses should be building on Horizon and another to explain uh, the incentive structure for sidechains. So that's kind of one of the little projects that's in the background at the moment that will be uh, visible in, in the next week or so. Um, on the BD front, Vano, Manon, and I have kicked off uh, an initiative that's actually starting to bear some pretty exciting fruit can't really say too much about it, um, but it's a little bit non-traditional from what we've been doing previously, and uh, the response we've got from partners has been pretty cool. So I'm looking forward to providing a proper update on that front reasonably soon. On the more traditional BD front, uh, yesterday was a good day. We agreed, uh, at least in principle, two new integrations. So again, excited to be look, uh, discussing these in a bit more detail in the coming weeks. That's pretty much it for me at the moment. Uh, if anybody else wants to jump in with an update, please feel free to do so. Hello, everyone. Van speaking. Uh, so today I introduced our Russian language community at our new uh, Fork Block Hub um, channel. And hopefully there are some uh, people here attending from there. I see a lot of new people here and hello. Uh, to them and apart from that uh, faucet translation team for russian and georgian and hopefully they will be online soon i think jonathan will update us about that in more details uh, and that's all from me and uh, pass it to manon hi everyone so this is manon from france in strasbourg so some news today about videos uh, we made again with Medar. Uh, this time we had the chance to be joined by uh, Frito and Lindsay to do a video on uh, Horizon Star. So I'm proud of this video because that was really a team team made one. And that's uh, really cool to hear a new voice on uh, these videos. And that's a reminder also to say that if anyone wants to join or videos to to uh, submit a subject, or for example, or just to join the creation. 
really feel free to do so because that's a really nice work we do all together. So thank you and pass to you, uh, Angie. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Now let's welcome Lucy for some marketing updates. Hello, everyone. Uh, happy Thursday. So we sent out a newsletter earlier this week about the newest feature on our faucet, a sweet huddle bonus. So if you have been following us, you know what this is. But um, for those who are new, uh, this is a new feature will give faucet users extra rewards. So all users need to do... Um, is to huddle some Zen on their verified Sophia address. Um, users can get extra free Zen as much as uh, three times more than before. So it is pretty, pretty sweet. Um, so the new feature is super popular on uh, social media. We are getting a lot of feedback uh, from the community about it. Uh, people are just loving it. We are also getting a lot of questions uh, on how to use this feature. So we published um, a guide on our blog. So please check it out if you have any questions on like how to get uh, freezing or extra freezing using this uh, uh, new feature. Um, and then one of the things that we are getting is that uh, 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 language related so i wanted to let uh, um, everyone know that we are working on adding more uh language versions to our faucet for our international users uh, and then also um about faucet uh, manon just uh, uh, mentioned that the she and and meta made uh, videos tutorials for users to uh, um, explain to users about how to use uh, faucet and how to get address verified on Sphere. So uh, big shout outs to them uh, because they are being very, very helpful for our users. Uh, and speaking of uh, being helpful, we also published a, uh, a community star interview yesterday about Cyrex. So Cyrex is a veteran volunteer in the Horizon community. Uh, he is known for his helpfulness and knowledge about Horizon. And he is just always around uh, uh, answer community member questions and help them solve their user issues. So check out the interview so we, uh, that we posted on our blog after the call to get to know him a little bit more. Uh, and then I'm sure that he will inspire more people to get uh, to get more involved with the project in the community. Uh, and uh, uh, more about community is that we are going to uh, release a very fun community uh, activity. So we would like to ask uh, our community to help us name our mascot. Uh, a, a you know that you've you've probably already uh, seen our horizon astronauts here and there you know including our faucet but he he or she doesn't have a name yet so we would like uh, our our uh, vol- uh, our uh, community to uh, uh, help us to get a name for our uh, for our astronaut we will uh, uh, publish uh, the uh, uh, this fun activity uh, today so please uh, please stay tuned and lastly, I would like to give a quick month end update about our social media and the website performance. So in April, our social media engagement increased by 25% with an uh, increase on Twitter by 38% and long. So uh, we've been getting uh, a huge amount of uh, um, an increase on engagement uh, with uh, new users. So really excited about that. Uh, uh, and then with that, Sophia downloads, uh, our Sophia wallet downloads increased uh, about 30% in comparison to last month. Uh, and then also website performance has increased greatly also uh, in the past 30 days. So there's nearly 50% increase in user visits and om- uh, and almost 55% of all users are new. Okay, so we see the similar performance on our blog site as well. So there's uh, a 33% increase in traffic and 47% of all traffic are from new users uh, on our blog site. So on top of the traffic in increase we also see engagement increase as well uh, such as total number of sessions the session duration uh, and page views which means that the traffic got uh, you know that we got is high quality uh, and then there uh, you know it's from real and very engaging users so uh, this is a team effort like a managers mentioned and uh, um, really happy about that and that's it from me thank you um, back to you, Angie. Uh, Jonathan uh, is not on call today. Okay, awesome. Thank you, Lucy, for the great updates. Now let's welcome Rosario for Product and Engineering. 
Well, awesome growth uh, activities and uh, marketing activities. So it's it's just wonderful to hear those uh, those steps, stats, uh, Lucy. So I want to extend the shout out to Cyrex and Chronic for updating our explorers. If you haven't seen those, please uh, check them out. And you'll notice they've been fully Zenified and uh, they're now displaying the faucet. So that's a gr- uh, great job and teamwork for that. Uh, as we approach the beta delivery, and uh, just to summarize what the be- uh, beta delivery uh, consists of, it consists of making the modifications to our uh, main main chain, uh, consists of uh, SDK uh, and the um, uh, proving keys and also the sphere, uh, the this, this sphere integrations with sidechains. So as we approach our beta delivery, our focus to attract developers becomes increasingly important. So we have a multi- multi-pronged approach uh, to do this. The uh, Horizon developer environment will play a key role in doing this, curating development tasks and associated bounties. Uh, also, uh, to k- kick off the, the sidechain um, delivery onto our testnet, uh, we'll have uh, multiple competitions, uh, so short, short-term competitions to incentivize de- uh, individual developers to build op- applications in our beta, then a long-term competition that will uh, incentivize developers to continue improving their applications and to migrate them to production when we get to that point. And, of course, uh, partnerships with uh, companies like Horizon Labs uh, that are pursuing uh, and attracting commercial partners to build on our network as well. So uh, this to say that uh, I am having an effort with uh, multiple departments. So we'll be bringing in um, engineering, of course, and um, UX and a different um, touch points within, within our, our, um, our team to ensure that we have a successful competition uh, going forward. So this will be something that we have a plan for that we'll uh, execute and then refine as we go. But uh, this is going to be a huge effort on our end. And I believe uh, Luca mentioned that we'll have a, uh, a new Sphere release, but I just wanted to just highlight that. A Sphere release is coming uh, within the next uh, couple days. So keep keep uh, an eye out for it and upgrade your Sphere wallet. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Rosario. Rolf, would you like to add any comments or updates? Yeah. Uh, thanks, Angie. So uh, we probably all saw the price rise c- compared to government money and Bitcoin here in the last uh, day, which is exciting for a few different reasons. It brings attention uh, to Bitcoin and the entire crypto space. Um, and after people start to get engaged, they look around for other projects uh, that um, address some of the drawbacks that they find with Bitcoin, and they enjoy being engaged. And I really love what we're doing with our faucet because it's something that we can do right now. Uh, and it's actually a stealth method to step people through important crypto activities. Um, it's the next level up from just buying crypto on an exchange or through a cash app or something like that. Um, and there's usually a delay between the Bitcoin price rise and other cryptocurrency price rises as people uh, go through the learning process. Um, and with a price rise comes increased attention. And so just like always, I think we should be looking at things from a beginner perspective, because one of the things that we're doing um, with the faucet and with uh, the learning and all the other things is bringing new users in. And uh, so sometimes there's little things that we take for granted, but might turn off a new user. And it's hard to put yourself in a time frame of a new user or a mindset of a new user. So sometimes it might be worthwhile to ask uh, questions. But like uh, the sweet hot bonus is a is a great idea. Then I look at it and I say, is you know, when I didn't know what HODL meant, I was kind of turned off and scared by that. So maybe something and I don't know if that's good or bad. It might be intriguing and exciting, or it might be a turnoff. But that, just saying that we should be looking at things from a new user perspective and make sure we step through the learning and acquisition and activity process uh, to look for any kind of sharp edges or words or attitudes that, that might make uh, people turned off. So just uh, 
uh, I'm excited. Uh, I think we're doing lots of great things, and, and there's always the opportunity for, for small improvements here and there. That's all I got. Thanks. Awesome. Thank you, Rolf. And now let's welcome Rob for the final part. Thanks, Angie. <clears throat> and Rolf completely agree with that. We need to constantly be improving. Um, okay, so thinking, let's think a little bit uh, into the future, not too far, um, but life post beta. So we're, we're already planning um, a couple of coordinated campaigns, uh, really targeted towards community developers and just uh, building our ecosystem and building the, the developers that come to our ecosystem and build useful products. So one of the coolest things that we're still fleshing out, but uh, we're absolutely committed to, is launching a series of consecutive um, developer competitions for really for apps using our beta and using our sidechain technology. So these will be competitions that will be relatively short in duration. So short with respect to you know the the complexity target that we're looking for for these types of applications, which would be on the lower side. Um, and also, you know, the time frame should allow the community to have sufficient time to actually um, see, you know, uh, see and, and touch and test it and experience the applications that are delivered and then vote on them. Um, so what we're thinking is these two month cycles, we're going to be doing them consecutively and really uh, putting some serious resources into it. Um, so clearly, as our resource uh, constraints are, you know, uh, um, relaxed a bit, then we'll be increasing the, the amount of resources for developers. But this is something we absolutely have to do. Um, so it's something that we've been waiting on this, this key technology that differentiates us from the rest of the market. And we're getting really close. So with beta, we're going to have the technology that developers can really start, um, you know, building some, some serious applications with. Now, in addition to that, so we're not stopping there. That's just a start. And this is a coordinated you know, set, of, set of campaigns towards uh, building our developer community. Had a great conversation with Jonas, Rosario, Gustavo, and Lucy yesterday about HDE, the Horizon Developer Environment, and uh, a set of big hackathons, a, a hackathon campaign that we've been planning with one of our partners. Um, so the hackathons were supposed to be in-person hackathons. Uh, clearly, that's not exactly feasible right now, uh, given the COVID situation. But what we're thinking is, uh, as, as early as um, beta goes live and Horizon Developer Environment HDE goes live, we can kick off uh, some of these hackathons and do them as virtual events. So we can still get a, a good bang for the buck and just get rolling. So I'm, I'm not a fan of delaying things if we don't have to delay them and we can course start with some online hackathons and then roll those into real you know live events when uh, the situation permits it so that's exciting because we're going to have uh you know a great education content for uh new or relatively junior developers many of them um uh, many of these events will be with universities um uh, so which is great because this is the next crop or the next generation of developers that we want to uh, you know, pull into our ecosystem and then not just throw an event and, and hope that they love our, our project and keep coming back, but actually provide follow-on activities and events that they can participate in productively uh, and become engaged. So HDE is something that I'm extremely excited for, and I think the team's doing a fantastic job getting it ready to roll out with beta. Um, let's see what else. So I, I love the tangible results that we're already getting. Um, on the marketing and, and growth and BD sides. So we're starting to see, like Lucy said, just the, the statistics as she read off about our um, community growth in terms of our comm channels and then the engagement that we're getting from them. That's really just a proxy for a whole bunch of stuff that's going on behind the scenes or, or things that are going on that aren't necessarily measurable or harder to measure. Um, but the end result is we're seeing a, a big increase in traffic and engagement across all of our communication channels uh, even you know down to our website, so that's just one indication that what we're doing uh, on at, at least this level is working very well. And let's see the the last thing that I wanted to mention here is uh, a huge shout out to Peace Do and you know Stoic Nate and some of the other uh, very very uh, devoted community members who have launched the Horizon Community Council HCC. So HCC went live over last weekend, and this is something I'm extremely excited for. You can read at least a hint of it in our white paper 2.0. We had a section on the HCC, um, but from publishing that until today, there hasn't been much uh, much news about it. 
Uh, that's not to say that there wasn't a bunch of work going on behind the scenes, but that culminated over the weekend and uh, PS2 launched a website, um, horizoncc.org, and a Discord server. That uh, We also have a channel in our own Discord, but HCC, the Community Council, is meant to be an entirely independent entity. And that's why it's something that I very, very much uh, support, and, and I want to see this um, this entity grow, and, and I want it to become an important, uh, you know, contributing element of our ecosystem. But I'm not, I'm not going to join myself. I would love to join, but I, I want this to be a completely independent entity. And it's starting off with one formal role, so it'll have a formal role and then some informal roles, and we'll see where it goes from there. But the formal role for the HCC will be to act as an editor for the Zenep process, the Zen Improvement Proposal System. So this is where. Um, you know, uh, really going forward because we haven't been using it so far, we just set it up, is whenever we have uh, improvements to our our code base, we're going to be formalizing them in ZenEps. And the ZenEps have a formal submission process, a review process, and there will be three initial editors to the ZenEps process. HCC will be one of these editors. The foundation here will, will be an editor and then also Horizon Labs as really the development arm thus far for the ecosystem will be another editor. Uh, so you have three editors. HCC will, will have an important role there in, in being really the, the first point of contact for new proposals for development in the ecosystem. Really excited for it. Informally, HCC is going to act as an advisor to the team, to the foundation, uh, and really just keep us in the loop with community sentiment. So this is really important. We, we have to, sooner than later, uh, really empower our community. So this was... We, we could keep on saying, well, hey, the, the community will, will be empowered with the voting system that we uh, want to implement, but we, we don't want to wait, right? So this is the first step in giving a voice to the community in some sort of organizational context. And I take it very seriously that the HCC will have a strong advisory role with us to start. So anyway, um, really big congratulations on, on you know the guys putting that together already. I, I've been told that the you know the first kernel of the council has been formed really from some of the people that you know and love from this community. Um, so I, I don't want to name them all because I, I may miss, leave someone out uh, inadvertently. But guys, thank you so much for just taking the initiative and just showing your devotion, passion for what we're doing here to actually take the time and effort to stand up a community council. So that's all I've got today, guys. I'll stop here and we can open up to any questions. Thank you, Rob. So the first question is, is all the treasure always hold, uh, always sold OTC or are some Zen sold on exchanges? Uh, it's all OTC. We actually don't uh, do not uh, dump Zen on exchange. Not, not that it would be dumping, but um, we have a very, very advantageous OTC relationship with uh, uh, Genesis Trading. And they, they uh, you know, quite frankly, give us a much better deal than we would get if we went directly to the markets. Thank you, Rob. So the sec- second question is, can you give us an idea of some of the high-level changes between Sidechain Alpha SDK and Sidechain Beta? You know, Alberto's just dying to jump on this one. Alberto? <laughs> no, uh, <laughs> not died. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> just joking. But <laughs> Okay, um, let's say... In a few words, let's try to, to be succinct on this. Uh, mainly, we are allowing uh, the full cycle uh, of transfers. What does this mean? This means that in Alpha, we had some node in the sidechain that were, was able to receive, to let me say, to, 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 to receive some coins from the main chain. But, I mean, the sidechain was able to forge some block with a very basic consensus, and that's it. Uh, With beta, we have uh, the full process of sending coins from main chain to sidechain. In the sidechain, we have a full uh, consensus implementation. So we have implemented the full Ouroboros prowse uh, consensus with also some changes related to let me say the manage ma- management of 
mention forks. So is this is in reality is a is a is a is a new consensus. I mean uh, that also will be formalized in the future. But in any case, uh, so this is part of beta. So it's a full decentralized consensus on 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 the sidechain side. Moreover, uh, there is uh, the, uh, we introduced the, all the the possibility to 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 perform withdrawal requests in the sidechain, and then uh, these withdrawal requests will lead to backward transfer. So you will have the certificate built in the sidechain with the list of backward transfer related to this epoch, and so um, and so you will be able to then send back some coins if you want from from the session to the main chain but this means also having the main chain uh, accept being able to accept a certificate and validate a certificate so this means uh, also that we introduced the proof verification i mean the the, the, the snark uh, proof verification in main chain and uh, even also in the in the in the in the side chain, the creation of a proof uh, with a beta circuit that uh, we we created specifically for beta. And as I told, maybe some of the week before, uh, some week before is a is a circuit that is a threshold signature circuit. So this is another uh, important uh, part of beta. So in reality, beta will will cover. The full cycle of of coins coming from 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 main chain being able to uh, send to the side chain uh, transfer coins in the side chain with a decentralized consensus that manages forks and everything and then being able to transfer back the coins from the side chain to the main chain and proof verification and so on so this is uh, our uh, let me say very high level uh, the um, differences uh, between uh, um, between beta and alpha. Uh, the next step will be, uh, for example, uh, accordingly to the Zendu sidechain paper, uh, proceeding with the uh, um, backward transfer request made in main chain and uh, seized sidechain withdrawal and uh, the full uh, circuit implementation in the sidechain. So uh, this is just to anticipate what also will be uh, the final release. And that's that's all. Thank you. Thank you, Alberto. Um, so the last question is: uh, um, Could the growth department provide data regarding the faucet in the weekly insider, uh, like weekly unique users, average daily users, then given for this week? Well, um, to answer this question, uh. uh some of these data is confidential, but I, I would I will have to defer this question to Jonathan. He will I'm sure that he will give more elaborated response in our next weekly insider. But what I can uh, share with uh, uh, with you today is that users to our faucet website is increasing every uh, you know every week or every month. Just for for instance, uh, in comparison to last month. Um, our our daily uh, traffic has increased um about four uh, percent, and then about nine percent of uh, all traffic are new users. And remember that we get very um, uh, our faucet size is highly trafficked. Uh, you know, uh, website we get already a lot of users to our website. Uh, so even with a five percent or four percent, six percent increase, that's a lot of people. Uh, and then with that, the uh, uh, page views and then also you know number of page views um, even have a much larger increase. For instance, um, every time when the user comes to our faucet, the number of pages that they visit every session that they that they uh, took uh, and then increase more than 42 percent and with the bounce rate dropped more than 25 percent that tells me that people are spending a ton of time on our faucet website a lot more than before i think that you know i uh, have a direct relation to uh, all the new features that we added recently people are really having fun uh doing you know getting all the extra rewards on our faucet website so um uh, this are you know the uh, the the metrics and the data that I can share today, but uh, I'm sure uh, Jonathan will have more insights uh, when he becomes available. 
Uh, is there anything else that you would like to add, Rob? No, I think that's fantastic. Thank you, Lucy. All right. Thank you. Uh, that's it. Uh, these are the top three questions for today's Weekly Insider. And we will post rest of the questions and answers on the chat channel here on Discord. So thank you and stay safe. Back to you, Angie. Awesome. Thank you, everyone, for being here. Have a great rest of the day. And I hope to see you all guys soon. Bye-bye.